glorified and exalted is he be upon us all. All praise is due to Allah. We praise him, we thank him, we seek his help, and we beg for his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah against the evil that is constantly lurking without, against the evil that is hidden, and against the evil that is apparent in front of our very own eyes. But we especially seek refuge with Allah against the evil that is within our own selves. For if we can control that evil, then no evil, whether it be hidden or apparent, will be able to control us. I openly bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I openly bear witness that Muhammad, to whom the Quran will reveal, is the true slave and the final messenger of Allah. Whoever Allah guides, there is nothing that can lead astray. Whoever Allah allows to be led astray, there is no one that can guide that person. Allah the Exalted has said in the Quran, O you who believe, fear your Lord as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims or in the state of submission. The Exalted has also said, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one single soul, and from that soul created its mate, and from those two created many men and women, and fear your Lord through whom you demand your mutual rights. Verily, God is watching over you. The Exalted has also said, O you who believe, fear your Lord, and speak words of appropriate justice, meaning speak the truth. If you do that, Allah will amend your deeds for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has truly achieved a mighty achievement. The most truthful of speeches of the Book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah forever be upon him. The worst of affairs are religious in, in, innovations. Every religious innovation is, in a, is a misguidance. Is in every misguidance is the going astray, and every going astray is in a hellfire, as what follows. Brothers and sisters, knowledge is power. Knowledge is light. Knowledge is the key to success. I'm sure we've all heard these terms before. Today I want to present to you why us as Muslims, knowledge is an obligation for us. And to neglect this obligation is to in fact be ungrateful to Allah, our Creator. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith, that the seeking of knowledge is far mandatory, compulsory for every Muslim man and Muslim woman. The seeking of knowledge is mandatory for every Muslim man and Muslim woman. You have to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, from here to China. It's mandatory. And when it comes to this, Mandatory, there's two types of fara'i. There's fard aini and fard kifai. Fard aini is something that's mandatory upon you and you alone. For example, salat is fard aini. Nobody can make salat for another person. You can, you can pray for them, but you can't make salat in absence of them doing it. Everybody has to make their own salat. Now, however, salat al janazah is fard kifai something that is compulsory for the community. As long as somebody in the community is performing salat janazah or funeral prayer when somebody dies, then everybody has completed the obligation. So that's a community or a communal obligation rather than a personal obligation. Now when it comes to knowledge or ilm, the fard aini is to know your salat. Every Muslim has to know fatiha. Every Muslim has to know how to make wudu. The ablution before you pray, because without that, there's no salat. Every Muslim has to know how to make ghusl. The ghusl is much more than a shower. We have a lot of new Muslims in our community. And what's compulsory upon the community is to teach these new Muslims how to do that. So an example of something which is fard kifai, as far as knowledge is concerned, is classes that facilitate these learnings or extracurricular learning. For example, if we had no doctors in our community, it's fard kifai for us to have at least a doctor to help us, in, at least a woman gynecologist, for example. That's a beautiful thing when I lived overseas in uh, UAE. My wife had it very easy because all the doctors, there's always women doctors for women. In our community, it's mandatory that we have some doctors, some lawyers. You know, when I was here a few weeks ago, I talked to a young brother. I don't see him in here today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep his name private because he might be embarrassed about this story. I asked him what he was doing for the summer. 
beautiful young brother, he told me he was going to camp for debate. He had a debate camp. And it made me smile because that's not normally something a child would choose. But wallahi, we need those individuals in our community. We need people who are eloquent, who can give da'wah, who can be lawyers, who can be doctors. It's not all about fun and games. This ilm that we have been commanded to seek by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only obligatory, but it's fundamental. And it's never ending. Like, you can never get enough knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, knowledge, you can keep going and going and going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Upon, on top of everybody who has knowledge is somebody who has more. Like, you can never get enough knowledge. You get to be a ulama or a alim, somebody who has extreme knowledge in this deen. And you can go above that to the level of the prophets. And then ultimately, you can never get to Al-Alim, which is Allah who knows everything. So you can never get enough knowledge for you to rest upon. There's still more for you and I to learn. And in this community, we're very grateful that a lot of the knowledge that is fought kafai upon us is being taken care of. Like for example, there's a lot of homeless people in this community. And thanks to these hardworking sisters and brothers within this community who feed the homeless and provide for them clothing, that fardu has been lifted upon us. So for those of us who don't have the time to contribute, we should at least give some money. Because my dad taught me something. He said, bro, son, either you got time or you got money. You can't not have both. So give your money if you don't have the time and contribute to some of these mandatory things that we are doing in this community. Along with that, we have the new Shahada class. There are so many potential Shahadas in this community. This is not a community which is filled with Muslims. Most people around here are non-Muslims. So we have an obligation as a community to give da'wah, and then after people convert to Islam, to give them classes and provide them with the knowledge that they need in order to fulfill their obligations as Muslims. Because as Muslims, we don't believe in Islam blindly. We don't have blind faith, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran, tells Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أُدْعُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا عَلَى بَصِيرًا To give da'wah, to give advice, or propagate this deen with basira with insight. We are people who contemplate. We ask questions. If we don't understand, we seek an understanding. We don't just follow Islam because somebody told us to. That's why we left where we came from. A lot of us are converts to Islam in this community, or the sons and daughters of converts. We left other ways of life because they didn't have the answers. They didn't please our intellect. It didn't make sense to us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us as Muslims to ask questions. If you don't understand, seek an understanding. That's how you gain faith. By understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and from me. Say, this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight insightfulness, clear-sightedness. We're not blind followers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us over and over again to contemplate, to reflect, to observe, to question. We seek as Muslims to gain faith and develop it through understanding and the opportunity to learn. One of the first instructions to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. Know with certainty that there is no God but Allah. In fact, the first ayah that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was what? Iqra, read. Reading is fundamental. Iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Science, right behind it. 
That's another knowledge which is faulty fact. Science, math. We need lawyers, we need doctors. We need businessmen and businesswomen. Everybody can't be here doing the teaching. Some people gotta be out there making the money so we can build the facilities to facilitate the learning. I wanna bring your attention to a conversation that was had between Ibrahim السلام, and his father in the Quran. And some of you may know why I'm referencing Ibrahim, especially right now. But I'll get into that, inshallah, in the second half of the football. But for now, let me relate to you the story between Ibrahim السلام, and his father in the Quran. إذ قال لأبيه يا أبتي لما تعبد ما لا يسمع ولا يم ولا يبصر ولا يغني عنك شيئا. Ibrahim said to his father, "Oh my father, why do you worship something that does not hear and does not see and will not benefit you at all?" يا أبتي إني قد جاءني من العلم ما لم يأتك. Oh my father, indeed it has come to me of knowledge that which has not come to you. So follow me, I will guide you to the even path. Ya abati la ta'abudu shaytan inna shaytana kana lirrahmani asiyya Oh my father, do not worship Satan. Indeed Satan has ever been to the most merciful disobedient. يا أبتي إني أخاف أن يمسك عذاب عذابا من الرحمن فتكون للشيء للشيطان وليا. Oh my father, indeed I fear that they will touch you a punishment from the most merciful. So you so you would be to Satan a companion. Now, after Ibrahim laid upon his father this hikm, this ilm, this knowledge. See how his father responds. And this is a response of a typical hypocrite. When you present facts to them, they have no answer. That's what you call a cap, or one who understands the truth and knowingly rejects it or covers it or hides it. A lot of times you give doubt what to people and you try to explain to them fundamentally, how could you come from nothing? Name something in this universe which existed out of nothing. They can't name anything. But yet they want us to believe that we came from nothing. And we're more complex than anything else in the universe. Did you come from nothing or are you the creators of yourself? Allah asked us in the Quran a very logical and fundamental question. And when you present this question to people who don't have answers, they, they respond to you like this. Have you no desire for my gods, O Abraham? If you do not desist, I will surely stone you. So avoid me a prolonged time. <laughs> he didn't have no answers. All he said was, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to kill you. Like, you're not going to respond to any of what I just said? Those idols that you pray to, they don't hear, they don't listen, they don't see, yet you don't contemplate? How could they be your God? And you're more powerful than them. Contemplation is what this deen is built upon. And apparently, the father of Ibrahim didn't have this contemplation. So the first step for Ibrahim alayhi salam in coming to Islam or the worship of one true God wasn't like an angel revelation. This isn't re revealed to him. This is a conversation between him and his father before he even became a prophet. It's when he was a boy. So he didn't come to Islam by way of angel or revelation. He came to Islam by way of intellect. If you think this is the only logical conclusion, you must have a creator. That creator must have a plan for you. He must have sent guidance down for you. Your job is to find out what your, job, what your purpose is to do with that guidance. And what better time to find out than now? Knowledge is so important to this deen of Islam that when the battle of Badr was going on, 
And there were some young sahabas who wanted to join Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What better reward than to fight next to the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What better, what more dignity could you want? What more esteem could you want besides to fight next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But you know what he told Zayn ibn, ibn Thabit? He told him, no, go back. Because I want you to have a better purpose in mind for you. I want you to learn how to read and write. So you can spread this deen. The knowledge was more important for Zayn ibn Thabit than fighting next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Knowledge is key, especially as a Muslim. We are commanded not only to seek knowledge, but to implement it. Because knowledge without implementation is just information, right? We can go on Google and get all the information we want. You can search pretty much any hadith you want on Google. Like a brother could tell you, oh, I know the hadith, I'll just Google it right quick. And you know the hadith, sure, you got a lot of information. Information is nothing until you apply it and then it becomes knowledge. When you know something, you do. You know who are, who, which people are the inheritors of the prophets? Because the prophets don't leave behind, behind inheritance. They don't leave behind wealth and, and, and cars and, and horses and lands and things like that, no. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith Al-anbiya lam yuwarrathu dinaron wa la dirhama warrathu al-ilm faman akhadahu akhadha bi hadhin wafir The ulama are the heirs of the prophets and the prophets leave, don't leave dinars or dirhams behind, they only leave knowledge. And whoever takes it, takes an abundant portion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the inheritors of the prophets. Ameen. <laughs> You know, there used to be a day and a time when young people were encouraged to be multifaceted. Nowadays, there's this perception that, hey, I'm gonna send my son or my daughter to Quran school. They're gonna be a hafiz or an alim or a sheikh or whatever. I'm not gonna put them, I'm not gonna worry about science and math and all of that. When did it become an either or thing? When did that happen in Islamic history? Let's take the example of Imam al-Nawawi. We, we, we're familiar with the 40 hadith of Imam al-Nawawi or the book Riyadh al-Salihin, most of us know that. He was, a, he was a philosopher. He was a astronomer. And he was a master of hadith. Doesn't have to be either or, right? Encourage your children to excel in all facets of knowledge. Because like I said, the knowledge of this deen is mandatory upon us all individually, but the knowledge of science and math is incumbent upon us as a community. So we need children who are gonna go out there and be mathematicians and scientists, but they don't only have to be that. You don't have to limit them to that. You need to show them examples of people who have mastered both, like Imam al -Nawawi. And what better time to freshen Upon your freshen up your skills in this deen, whether it be a new surah you want to learn or uh, some more hadith you want to learn or a new book you want to read, then right now, because right now we're in the best, the best days of the year. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that these days that we're in right now are the best days of the entire year. The first 10 days of the Hijjah. It's the second day right now. 
in hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ عَمَلِ الصَّالِحِ فِيهَا أَحِبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ There are no days on which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than on these days, meaning these 10 days of the Hijjah right now. This is the only time in your life, these 10 days, where you can complete all five pillars of Islam at the same time, right? You can take your shahada, people are taking a shahada all the time, anytime. Make your salat all the time, anytime. You can fast. The fast on Arafah forgives your sins from last year and the next year. If you fast on the ninth day, which would be next Friday, everybody should fast that day. Your sins from last year and next year will be forgiven just to fast on that one day. And of course, you can give zakat, and then you can make hajj. Now is the only time you can make hajj. You can't make hajj no other time. So for that reason, and other reasons, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Quran, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالِ عَشْرِ if you go to the tafsir of the Qur'an and you look up the tafsir of Wal Fajr, it's actually talking about the 10 days of the Hijjah. Wal Ayal and Ashur, he swears by it. When Allah swears by something, it shows its, it, its uh, significance. The 10 days of the Hijjah are mighty powerful days. So what better days than now to re refresh in some surahs that you may have forgotten, some surahs that you may want to learn. To increase your knowledge on the tafsir, to increase your knowledge on the sirah, to increase your knowledge on the hadith. You know, a couple of weeks ago I saw a brother come up after the after the khatib finished giving his speech. And he was crying. And it, it, it was it was touching because this brother was crying. He was he was an Arab. He was a native Arab speaker. And for a lot of us who are converts to Islam, this deen is a lot harder to comprehend and to get because we don't speak the Arabic fluently. So we have a harder time going through it. But when he heard the Khatib reciting in Arabic and spitting Hadith by memory, he started to cry because he knew Arabic by his mother's tongue. It was his native language. Yet he didn't put into in the, in the work to understand the deen. For those of you who speak Arab, for those of you who speak Arabic, and your native tongue is Arabic. Be examples, be shining lights. Be grateful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with and use that to, not only for yourself but to teach others. Because a lot of us who are converts in this deen, we have a hard time learning the Arabic. And when we do, we go hard at it. Because that's a sign of faith. You oftentimes see converts being excelling in this deen as far as knowledge is concerned because you need to put in the effort but don't let that be a, a uh, what do you call it don't let that hold you back don't let that be a crutch oh brother I don't really know the Arabic so learn the Arabic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you intellect gave you a mind a powerful one learn it take the time don't be lazy don't use the fact that you weren't born with your mother's tongue being Arabic spoken in your house. Don't use that as an excuse for you not to learn this deen. Excel in it. Not only is Yom al Arafah the ninth day of the Hijjah coming upon us, but the best day of the entire year. It's coming up to and these last in these first 10 days of the Hijjah the best day of the entire year Yom al -Nah, which is the day of the big Eid it's coming so take advantage of these 10 days by fasting by doing extra Salah by doing Dhikr but before you go even get started you need to clean because what, what good is a good meal if it's on a dirty dish you need to clean your hearts. Clean your homes, clean your hearts. Anybody you had enmity towards or hatred or any family member that you're not speaking to, go ahead and rekindle that bond. As I said, when I started the chutbah, fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. 
and your mutual rights as Muslims is to speak to one another. If you have a brother or a sister or a cousin or a mother or a father or even a friend that you haven't spoken to because there's some hatred in your heart towards that person, forgive them as you would want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you on the day of judgment. Because as long as you're angry and mad at that person, your hasanat will be on hold. Your blessings, your works, your good deeds, they're going to be on hold until you fix that situation. So fix that first. Get that hatred out of your heart for that person. Even if it's just a call to say, brother, uh, last and first 10 days of the hijab, be blessed. May Allah bless you. Or oh, sister, it's the first 10 days of the hijab. I'm trying to get all my blessings. May Allah bless you. Clean your house first. Clean your plate first. Get you a good clean dish and then put a meal on top of it. And that meal, extra salah, fasting, giving extra money. Because even if you don't have the opportunity to make hajj, I got, I, got a, I got a secret, not a secret, not a secret, I got a tip, something that a lot of people don't know. We all can make hajj right now, tomorrow. We all can make hajj tomorrow. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if you pray Fajr in the masjid and you sit in that same spot, or you don't have to just sit in the same spot, you can walk around and be in the same place. And for women, you should have a musalla in your house, so it doesn't have to be the masjid. For women, it can be your house. And you remember Allah until the sunrise. And then you wait for a few minutes and you make salat and duha. It's the same as making hajj and umrah. So if you haven't made hajj, even if you have made hajj, wake up for fajr, go to the masjid, pray salat and fajr, sit in the place, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the sunrise, make salat and duha, and Allah will reward you with the hajj and the umrah, inshaAllah ta'ala. Now what if somebody told us that if we made Fajr tomorrow and, and, and we sat until the sunrise, Master of Islam is giving out 5,000 for everybody who knew that. I bet you this place will be packed outside and around the corner. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we slack. I'll leave you with this. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْجَعُوا وَجَاعِدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ when it comes to peace of Deed Allah, we slack. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the mu'mins or the believers are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger. They do not doubt. And they strive in the way of Allah. With their money and with their selves. For the sake of Allah and Allah alone. Forgive that person that you have hatred for in your heart for the sake of Allah. Maybe they don't deserve it. Maybe they're really just a fool and they deserve whatever they get, but, but forgive them for Allah's sake. So that Allah may accept you and accept your Eid and accept the 10 days of the Hijjah fast as much as you can. For a person like me who has a lot of sins, I need my sins from last year and this year forgiven. I need to fast all of these days. Try to fast every single day from here on. Inshallah Ta'ala, may Allah accept it from us and forgive us our sins. Allahumma Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana, wa fina adab al-nar. Allahumma Rabbana la tuzir kulubana, ba'da id hadaytana, wa hab lana min ladun karahma, innaka anta al-wahab. Allahumma Rabbana la tuzir kulubana, ba'da id hadaytana, wa hab lana min ladun karahma, innaka anta al-wahab. Allahumma Rabbi zidni ilma, Allahumma Rabbi zidni ilma. اللهم ربي زدني علما اللهم ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا تراقب لنا به فاعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربي رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة إن صلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب المؤمنين Allah